without fear before our enemies. We have sworn an oath to restore Biafra or we die in the process. There will be no retreat and no surrender. If the option they give to us is to seek our restoration by violence, the every living thing living in the zoo will be destroyed. All the animals will be destroyed. It's a promise and a pledge we are making to them. They must understand that we just don't... Good evening, wonderful people, great beer friends, wherever you are on the face of this very planet. We welcome you once again to our live presentation on this very day. Today is Wednesday, the 24th day of March in the year of our Most High Elohim, 2021. The time now is two minutes past 7 p.m. in the blessed land of Biafra and the same number of minutes past the top of the hour, regardless of where you're domiciled and where you're listening to us from. This is a live presentation, part of our lecture series where we enlighten, we educate, we inform, and we bring knowledge to people all over the world regarding everything we are doing to restore the kingdom of heaven upon the face of this very earth. And of course, to bring the existence of the damnable, full and nice, zoological republic to an abrupt end. Our mission is very simple, to restore Biafra or we die restoring Biafra. I welcome you regardless of where you are. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. This very broadcast is simulcast on multiple platforms. We are on Instagram, on my official handle, Mazenandekanu underscore official. Most of you are there already. We are also on Twitter. On Twitter, we are broadcasting live on Twitter. Please, you can join us there, especially if you don't want your wife or your husband to know that you're listening to this very gospel and being educated as a result of it. As I said, we are on Twitter, also at Mazen Namdekano. You will find me there. I think we are now approaching nearly 275,000 followers on that very platform, regardless of what the enemies are doing to try to suppress our followership and of course, our audience reach. We are also on FM in Biafra land. We are on satellite. Those of you with strong decoder should be able to listen to us clear and uninterrupted. We also happen to be on IPOB community radio, which is your friendly app. You should have it all the time. We are also on radio Biafra app. We are on tuning. We are all over the place. And I'm sure that some people are streaming this very broadcast live on Facebook this very evening, morning, noon or night, depending on where you are. As I said, we are live, we are direct, and heaven is bearing us witness as ever. My name is Mazen Namdekano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, the largest mass movement of its kind anywhere in the world. I am the director of radio Biafra and Biafra television, and by the very special grace of the Most High Elohim, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. After this very broadcast this evening, your life can never, ever be the same. Never. Because we are about to reveal to you all those things that they have been keeping away from you. 
that the zoo is in the state that it is today. And for those of you who are joining us for the very first time, when we say the zoo, just Google it. Ask Google which country is called the zoo. And they will tell you it is the damnable zoological Republic of Nigeria, a place where nothing works, a place where evil obtains, a place where every manner of idiocy and stupidity is on display, and also, they say that our community radio is looping. It is looping. It is an old broadcast and it is looping. I don't know what that is supposed to mean. We'll try once again to try to connect and see if we are going to be live. Thank you very much for informing me, Mr. Amachinek. Mr. Amachinek, thank you very much for that. I believe that we are now live and direct on that very platform. I don't know exactly what happened. But as I said, we happen to be on Twitter as well, and we are on Instagram. If you have difficulties listening on what platform, please try and switch to the other one. We are, people are sending me messages, of course. Now uh, that I'm very clear, thank you very much. Thank you very much, wherever you are. Thank you very, very much, wherever you are. We are live and we are direct. And if you go on our community radio app, IPOB community radio, we are live on that very platform at this precise moment. I do not know what happened, but thank you very much for bringing this to my attention. Some of you should stream this on your pages on Facebook, please, because Facebook doesn't want us to preach this very gospel, but have failed and failed very woefully. And this evening we shall preach it. But before we proceed any further, and as it is customary with us here, we must hand over our proceedings to the Most High, the creator of the heavens and the year, the same God that created Israel, the God that created Biafra, the same God that created Russia, the same God that created Germany, the same God that created the United States of America, the same God that created England, the same God that made Scotland and all the rest of the natural nations upon the face of this very earth. In Africa, especially in the zoological republic, Nigeria was created by a white man and a white woman, not even by Africans. It's Nigeria is the finest example of the stupidity of a black man. They never created their own country and they are willing to die for the creation of a white man. That tells you the extent of their stupidity and idiocy, but we're here to cure it this evening. After all, all the raging agitations right across Nigeria is as a result of that led by IPOB. Without IPOB, nobody will be talking about freedom as boldly as they're doing today. We are the trailblazers. And we are happy to say that this very enlightenment, this very teaching, this very impartation of knowledge to those who hitherto we are very ignorant is pivotal to the collapse of the zoo as it is now happening before our eyes. We must pray because I believe that all our platforms are now okay. Let us hand over ourselves and our proceedings to the Most High. And we must pray, of course, in the ancient language, in the oldest language upon the face of this very earth. That incidentally, nobody has come out to try to dispute. That is why they are called Ndibo, ancient people, very old people. We must pray because that is the language of heaven itself. Right now, the angels, including those of them, that we fondly refer to as unknown gunmen. They are worshiping Elohim because their spirit, of course, they are worshiping Elohim in this very oldest language known to man. Nandenso Unyanya Dabere Anya Bokwa Hansog in Uhuruchi to to hinya bali. Ni no more basas the copaka or wanine buru. We're not dragging my magine bray, I'm ragging or me cogebendegeno. Kiru you were chane banyan or kiwe melanya mana. And you were not your sigi kese kahara bundi kunika we make dany and kebre den goes and I can send it to a gabapa hono. Na kahara bi mlikiti bundi kunri wese na bia fraga gabia ndi de tu aga gadi ni hino bu gyo magi bonye pebri na bia fraga gabia rere ebo ge mmadi obu na nge bu chine ke na obu na nge kanyine fe we na ajamma mu nwe ge ihe ozo ge meki we nya ni bia fraga ko eni hina nya na ge faru se anya na ge faru pa ahun na nke bere 
and then I get the hours of a lap rapid. Oh, wiggy hop, lap on caca, madman and nankiwe, and dining up with Salanya. Open your legs, you will not snob an anagi, but chile can nanka for me, and in a open anagi base. How about the Rocanian? I do took any to in Sopro Canyon and Sopro and Benin APB. And you will not say, and then so be going to put no more upon the APB and no one in them. Is no be afraid, Bobble Han on Nankaber. Can go see you with Jota Han. Kiwe were a young cousin, Kiwe le was under the etwa. Nigan and Dino Caracare. Le Quebenin and Nankuwe. Candy no way to do more than who quickly. Come on, Anya, Madame Bon Canyon, and Biafra be here, Granian and Canoga, and Ben Canyon and Kiwe. Open a loom from Kikuranic Ibokas Roku, we're not to call Hansog and Abalia. We're not snob and Anagi Buchinek and Kapurumi. Come on again, a better game, my mother, no Miku is you can even do one. Kiwe let us know of IPB no one in. Bunde come with your Roptara. Sen haga gragos in haga was your man kegen nan kigwe kege make a lazy we snelli go we blot an elo wanka go one in ne we me hon we sinezi and ezi and no more biafra bo muchineke and we neto we na jagin bo wana goza hand so na sumi spinning and so putin e jamani me mbulia ni nega bunka na gwa moro mbuli ne baby kaka he say he say he say the very language of heaven itself that is the language of prayers and we have prayed this evening and we must continue to preach this very gospel. It is not a particularly very fine evening for me because I have a very critical announcement to make later on, but we're going to do the best we can this evening to bring this knowledge to the world over. Before we proceed, I want everybody to go to Google, those who can, go to Google, please, and Google this very news, if you want, because every news that we analyze, every issue that we bring to your attention is verified, not just verified, but carried by zoo newspapers and media in general. By zoo, I mean Nigeria, because Nigeria is not fit for human habitation. Not even animals can live there. This evening, I'm about to prove it to you. I want to showcase to the entirety of humanity the, the stupidity of your average Nigerian. I want to prove to the world that your Nigerian, so to speak, is lower than an animal. I want to prove it to you. That anybody you see shouting one Nigeria, our country, let's move the country forward. I want to prove tonight with facts and figures coming from Nigeria itself that that very person is lower than a dog. I want to prove to the world that they, that Nigeria is the embodiment of the stupidity of a black man. The existence of Nigeria lends credence to the fact that black people are inferior to white people. This evening, I shall prove it to you with facts and figures. As most of you may know, I am not a sentimentalist. I don't believe in all those useless sentiment. If you claim that black people are equal to white people, that God made every man equal, then you should be able to reason the way that Caucasians reason. You should be able to do the things that they have done. You should be able to, to should I say, build and organize your societies the way that they too have done. We have not, in, we have never ever done any of these things. All we do is we beg, ask for handouts. When they are killing us, we run to the white man. When we cannot feed ourselves, we run to the white man. When things are going wrong, we run to the white man. Even the zoo, everybody is waiting for Britain, Daddy Britain, to speak before we know, should I say, the importance or the inevitability of the realignment of the political structure of Nigeria itself. We are, everybody's waiting for the queen to speak, waiting for Boris Johnson to speak. Black people in Africa cannot do it. Everybody's waiting for a white man. And now let me prove it to you why I say that anybody calling him or herself a Nigerian is the most idiotic idiot in the world. Google this news, please. Leah Shuaibu gives birth that's her second baby in Boko Haram captivity. Leah Shwaibu, her name is Leah, L-E-A-H, if I'm not mistaken. Her surname is Shwaibu, I think, S-H-U-A-I-B-I, -I, or Sharibu as the case may be. Just Google Leah Shwaibu. She's a Christian girl from the same middle belt. I want you to follow what I'm saying this evening very sequentially and methodically. If you don't have a pen and paper, you shouldn't be listening. 
I'm telling you, if you don't have a pen and paper this evening, I, I'm telling you the truth. You should not be listening. My contention is that as you're Googling this very name, Leah Shwebu gives birth to the, her second baby in, in Boko Haram captivity. I want you to have this thing at the back of your mind. That's Nigerians, wherever they are, they're like Leah Shwebu. Who is Leah Shwebu? She is a Christian girl from the Middle Belt. By Middle Belt, I mean where Gowon comes from. The man that rejected restructuring, the man that could have preempted everything now happening in Nigeria. That idiot, the, uh, 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 to call him an idiot is to insult the animal called idiot because he's lower than that very idiot. His name is Yakubu Gowan. He was the one that went to Aburi to go and negotiate a new Nigeria, so to speak, in 1967. He went to that very place. Britain asked him not to agree to the terms that he had previously agreed in front of Ankara, who was then the Ghanaian head of state. He agreed as a gentleman. They call him an officer and a gentleman. But that idiot idiotically came back to Nigeria and reneged on all the agreements he reached with Ujuku Ataburi. And that is symptomatic of what is happening in Nigeria today. And I want people to pay very close attention to what I have to say. Lua, Leah Shwaibu was abducted from her state, Yobe state, Dapchi. According to, of course, everyone knows that. There is this people because the reason why you hear about her is because a lot of white people in America have taken up her cause. And I think that Reno Mokri and all the rest of them have been fighting to put her name out there in the limelight so that the world can understand what is happening. They call her a heroine Christian. People must pay attention. A lot of people will be very angry this evening after this very podcast. But as you well, you know me very well. I don't give a, I don't give a damn. She's a Christian. The Pope has not called for her release consistently. The Archbishop of Canterbury, these are all Christian, frontline Christian leaders all over the world. None of them have consistently called for the release of Leah Schwaber because she is a Christian. And the lives of Christians do not matter. Only the lives of Muslims. Only Muslims matter. Because can you imagine, I want people to please ponder this for a second. Can you imagine that say a militant group or a group identified, let's say um, a group from the South, for instance. Imagine that a group operating in the South went to a school or went to one Gariki market somewhere and abducted a Muslim virgin girl who is Fulani took her to a camp, let's say in Olo, let's use Olo for example, and took her to a camp in Olo, held her hostage, continuously raping her until she fell pregnant. Mind you, she was a virgin. She gave birth in captivity to the first child, and now she has given birth to another child in captivity. I want you to ponder for a second. You took a Fulani girl to a forest in to the bushes in, in Olo. Not that they don't know where this girl is. They, all of them, they know. The Fulani Janjawi, they know. They took her into a forest. And they're raping this Fulani girl there every blessed day until she fell pregnant. What do you think will happen to Olo? It's just a very simple question. Because I want to bring home to people why I, de why I hate Nigeria with but I despise the zoo and any idiot that calls himself a Nigerian. This evening, I want to prove that your average Nigerian is the most idiotic, is the most useless thing ever to walk the face of the earth. What do you think will happen to all of you? Full What do you think BBC will do? What do you think the US ambassador will do or even the British High Commission? They will say that the entire Igbo land will be leveled. They will bump everybody to smithereens. 
Or should I say to the kingdom come? Are you following me? Imagine a Fulani virgin girl, a Muslim, being held hostage in Omoaya, a forest somewhere in Omoaya. What do you think will happen to Omoaya? What do you think Muslims will do all over the world? They will start slaughtering anybody who is not a Muslim. If you, in fact, if you're Biafra and if you're from southern Nigeria, they will slaughter you wherever you are in the world. Now, this is why I hate Nigeria. People wonder why. I have my reasons. Because Nigerians are the most foolish, idiotic people in the world. Useless to the core. They thrive on gossip. On stupidity and silliness. They have no class. They have no shame. They have no grace. Nigeria is the most useless thing that man ever made. Do you know why this girl was taken? And it is called, I don't know, it is called comeuppance. She was taken from a region that the person responsible for the mess that Nigeria is in today, which is Yakubu Gowan. He's from the Middle Belt. This young lady, I believe, is also from the Middle Belt. You have idiots on social media writing about Middle Belt. Middle Belt is only about that. A Middle Belt Christian in a country called Nigeria has been held hostage now for nearly three years. She was a virgin, a little girl. They raped her to the point whereby she fell pregnant. I don't want to talk about the girls that they raped and they had to cut out her womb only last week in Lagos. Nigerian army. I want people to understand, when you're talking about one Nigeria, listen, I want you to understand that you are an instrument of Lucifer. Satan, equation, Satan is using you to perpetrate and to perpetuate evil. Only, only somebody from the bowels of darkness can ever say that Nigeria is viable. Only if you're working directly for Satan. And that Satan will destroy all of you because you people are evil. Evil beyond human comprehension and contemplation. I'm telling you the truth. You people are beyond evil. Every idiot, it doesn't matter your political coloration. Every animal in the zoo, it doesn't matter how you, you think acceptable, you think people uh, will see you, view you, or take you. As long as you wake up in the morning and you say, I'm a Nigerian, I swear to Almighty God, may thunder the, may God punish you, punish your generation forever and ever because you are evil. Only an evil person can support a country where a little girl, a virgin, was abducted from her school, held in captivity for over three years. Rape after rape. Now she has a second child. And you people are not even ashamed of yourselves to be reporting it. She has her second child in captivity. Very flippantly, very dismissively. You people are evil. Do you see why God condemned black people because you're evil? You people are evil. You are satanic. There is something satanic inside you as a black person. No wonder the white man painted the devil black. You people are wicked beyond human reasoning. Because she is not a Muslim. The stupid Pope, Roman Catholic Pope, that idiot, I don't know what, where he comes from, cannot talk about Leah Shuaib. But he was busy praying and campaigning for Rohingya Muslims to get justice. Those fools in Canterbury, that idiot, Archbishop of Canterbury, those fools there that you contribute your money every Sunday and send to. Yes, Waibu is a Christian. They cannot speak because Muslim interests hasn't been threatened. The whole world is there. American ambassador is in Abuja, a woman. I don't think she has any children. Because you cannot tell me that people that wield such influence, that has such clout, 
will keep quiet and a little girl. But they can find American soldiers who, are, who were kidnapped or Amer American aid workers. They can send Delta Force to release them, but you cannot send Delta Force. The U.S. ambassador, a woman, cannot write to her government to say, we need to free this little girl. She has done nothing wrong. A very brave girl. She said, I will not renounce Christianity, my faith. Because of that, she's being raped by Muslim Islamic terrorists. And people are reporting the news as if it is just a joke. Leah Ibuna has second child. If God does not destroy Nigeria beyond recognition, I will stop believing in God. I'm saying it tonight. What I'm saying is, is terrible, it is awful, but I'm telling you the truth. Nigeria is the creation of Satan for the habitation of evil people. The highest concentration of Satan, the highest concentration of the most wicked people on the face of the earth are Nigerians. They are in Nigeria. They are in Nigeria. Some of you, when your stupid baby Nigeria will come, you watch it. I just sometimes when I when I look at these people, I, I I say to myself, why did God even bother creating these people? God shouldn't have created black people. I think it was a waste of time. A people without conscience, you have no conscience. Nobody saying, how about if this little girl is my daughter? Nobody is thinking, how are the parents feeling? No. She was telling me, one Nigeria, let's work for our unity. Every day, unity. It was the same one Nigeria that put Leah Shuaibu where she is. Without your stupid, idiotic one Nigeria, what happened to her could not have happened to her. You ask me why, and I will tell you. Because had Nigeria been divided, or... Uh, there was um, this kind of understanding that independent ethnic groups should coalesce to form whatever federation or nation that they like. What right does a Fulani Janjaweed from Senegambia to come all the way to Yoba State and by the federal government of Nigeria, yes, they said it with their open mouth, they said it themselves, the guns given to them by the Nigerian government to come and kidnap a Christian girl to hold her in captivity, raping her every blessed day. Now she has given birth to a second baby, to a terrorist, basically. Had Nigeria not been one, do you think, it's a very simple question. Do you think anybody who have their, any idiot, who full of idiot can come from Mali to come to your village, to your forest, to stay in your forest, telling you what to do? You have me eight yala, a terrorist group running the country? It's a simple question. I want it, I want those fools both those who are illiterate and those that claim that they are academics, I want them to reason for once because they are foolish. That's why they don't have no electricity. They have no good roads. They have no hospitals. Every day they lament. They lament. All they do is they lament. Do something to get yourself out of the mess you're in. You cannot. You have a, a bunch of idiots with decorated fingernails every day. This is a felony. On a rise news. One idiot. Or a couple of them. This is Everything is still a felony. Well, how do you classify or quantify the crime against Leah Shwaibu and Christianity at large in Nigeria? That is why this evening I am calling for the disbandment of Christian Association of Nigeria. It shouldn't exist. It should not exist. It has no role. It has no purpose. It has no meaning. Can Christian Association of Nigeria should be abolished? And I would not have Christian Association of Nigeria hold any meeting anywhere in the East. They cannot hold and from what we have done to Hanese, we are going to do to Khan because of this little girl. Leah Shwaibu. Leah Shwaibu is the is the personification of everything wrong with Nigeria and Christian Association of Nigeria. You can go to your churches and pray, do whatever you like in your churches, that's fine. 
but you cannot gather under the umbrella of Christian Association of Nigeria anywhere in the East. Try it and see what will happen to you. You people are fools. You put, your foolishness is beyond foolishness. You claim your priest, the man of God. You people are you are leeches, you are criminals, and God will punish one of you. You are criminals. Do you think that if you're holding a Muslim Fulani girl, a virgin, anywhere in the south, be it in Yoruba land or in Biafra land, seriously speaking, do you think the imams in the north will keep quiet? Even the imams in Niger Republic will complain. Those in Sudan will complain. You have pastors running up and down with their private jets telling you, so see the plant of uh, plant flower, do this water, it's all you idiots. Idiotically, you are following people who are blind and foolish. And above all, that has no conscience. No conscience whatsoever. I don't want to hear about can meeting anywhere in the East. That useless, idiotic Christian society. Rubbish. As useless as Nigeria itself. Look at Leah Schweiger. What did she do wrong? Her only crime is to profess her faith. Britain is there. America is there. They know where they're holding her. The world cannot say this girl has suffered enough. Let's go and rescue her. Because we are living in a very evil and wicked world. We are money rules. Fulani has all the money in the world. They have stolen all the money in the zoo. That is why even more idiotic are those calling themselves Niger Deltans, one of the most foolish people ever on the face of this earth as well. That oil that belongs to all of us, our oil and gas, because of your stupidity, the Fulani took it. And you're still living in that stupidity like we get in tomorrow morning. That is where they made all their money. They can bribe Google to really put up bad news about uh, Namde Khan or IPOB or Biafra. They go to America, they buy over the whole of Capitol Hill in America, identify corrupt US politicians and give them money. And when they talk about the pain and suffering of the likes of Leah Shwaibu, they say it happens everywhere. They go to Britain and the EU, they buy them over. Their war chest is now 34 billion US dollars. 34 billion that they're willing to spend. Is the world going to listen to somebody with 34 billion or somebody who has nothing? Look at Bill Gates, for instance. He can do whatever he likes and get away with it. Look at this idiot, Zuckerberger, whatever they call the idiot. Look at him. They have money. They can do whatever they like. They can give you culture, uh, a virus in a lab in Wuhan, in China, and give it to you. And still sell the vaccine to you because they have money. I'm asking you, who do you think the world will? I want all these idiots, major Delta, and from South South. I want you to, in your foolishness, to understand what you're doing to yourself. All because of your bickering. Uh, I'm this, I'm separate. Fulani is taking all the oil. They can kidnap Leash Raibu, they can get her pregnant. It's nobody's business. They buy over the whole world. Nobody will talk. They have the money. Britain will just say to them, Oh, these are the guys with the money. These idiots from the north that are the ones with the money. And uh, they go to them. And that's what is happening to you today, isn't it? In the zoo. That is why Leah Shwaibu is there. They're holding her. She has given birth to her second child. A world without conscience. Human race right now is just not fit for purpose. Not fit for purpose. All that uh, people are concerned about is that let us legalize gay marriage. Let us, um, how can I put it, let uh, Islam continue to advance unchecked. That's what that concerns me. The life of this little girl that is innocent. They said it was a virgin that gave birth to Jesus. This girl was a virgin. Destroyed. Completely destroyed. And every Sunday, every Saturday, we go to temple, to the synagogue to pray. Every Sunday, we go to the church to pray. Some of you in the Islamic faith with conscience, every Friday, you go to pray. How many of you remember this girl? This girl is like you. The same way that terrorists are holding her hostages, how Fulani Caliphate is holding all of you hostage. You are like Leah Shwaibu. 
The world can see what is happening to you as an average Nigerian. You have no hope. You have no future. Everywhere you go to, if you're if you're if you're a high-ranking officer in any parastato, they remove you. They put Fulani there. They put Fulani there. All of you are looking sheepishly talking about the Blessed Day, 2023, uh, from Niger, from South South, our oil, our gas, all these idiots everywhere. Fulani have done their homework. And you're dancing to their tune. You're like, every Nigerian is like Leah Schwebel. All of you, you are being held hostage. The world can see that you are no longer in control of your future. But there is nothing you can do about it. Are you telling me, tell me where else in the world that this will happen? CNN will have it on their front page every day. Ask yourself, why are the likes of CNN, CNBC, Fox News are not carrying it? Because they have taken money from Fulani. They know how to share money very well. And you're telling me that this world is fair. You're telling me I can't can even imagine what the parents are going through. Some of you with children, if you have a little girl, go back to your bedroom. I'm sure some of them are sleeping. Look at that, your little girl. Imagine that some boy invades your home and takes the little girl away from you. In the next three years, you hear that your daughter, your 14 your year old daughter now has two kids. Not by high choice. How, how would you feel as a father and as a mother? That is how the parents of this girl is feeling this evening. Spare a thought for them. All of you sh shouting one Nigeria, one Nigeria, one Nigeria, one Nigeria. Have you seen the mess you put this girl in? Because the more you continue to talk about one Nigeria, the more the full and the terrorists will come. They're never going to stop. Do you think they're stupid? Every head of security is them. Are you foolish? Majority of police commissioners are them. Are you daft? They control customs. They even control fire service, civil defense. Are you? I, sometimes I wonder the type of school some of you went to. Are you that foolish? You were there when Onogen was removed. I didn't hear anybody shouting Niger Delta or South South. He's our man. Nobody. Every person who says that he is a Nigerian, believe you me. In fact, no idiot. I have never seen anybody. When I was in the US, I was saying, when I see somebody, oh, I'm from Odudua, I'm Yoruba. Nobody said I'm in Nigeria. Nobody, not a single soul. I travel extensively all over the world. I have never met anybody say, oh, where are you from? Uh, they say I'm in Nigeria. Never. They tell you the ethnicity, where they come from. As God intended. They are busy convening the convener of the US Nigeria Law Group. In a country where there is no law, you have lawyers. Isn't that a shame? In a place where there is no law. Are you telling me that should CIA or MI5 or MI6 put their mind to it, they cannot tell you where Leah is? Is that what you're telling me? Where you've managed to find an American hostage, oh, but you cannot find where Leah Schwebu is. And Leah Schwebu is being held by people who come out openly to say that they own Nigeria. They, you, you, even today, I'm, I'm coming to the news. Miyatiala said, yes, we are the bandits. <laughs> but a chief of army staff cannot go after them. Oh, no, they, oh, no, they want to come to the south to look for Namdekano, oh, Sondi Uboho, and whoever they said they want to look for. And all of you, you read the paper like a bunch of clowns and idiots. None of you will ask yourself this question. Why don't you go after those holding Leah Shwaibu? Why don't you go after them? All of you are you see, I think that Nigeria has a way of turning some of you into, into uh, or not has a way, has turned all of you into uh, both those that with Nobel Prize oh, and those who oh, professor, everybody is a fool in Nigeria. He's a complete idiot in Nigeria. Complete fool in Nigeria. Look at Leah Shwaibu. Can this nonsense happen elsewhere in the world? I'm asking you. Can this rubbish happen elsewhere in the world? Every Sunday, you go to Catholic Church, you contribute money, you give to the Pope. You go to Anglican Church, you donate money, you give to Archbishop of Canterbury. You go, you give Methodist Church, they send it to heaven knows where. Baptist Church, God knows where they send it to. Pentecostal goes to the pocket of the, of the idiot standing in front of you.
Shouting God, Jesus, God, Jesus. Leah Shuaibu, where is she? She is in she is in captivity because of her faith. What have you done? Nothing. Has there been any protest for her? All these bishops, all these uh, men of men of Satan, Mong, where are they? Can do nothing. All the all they want is money. Using the word of God to deceive the idiots and the gullible. All of you are there in the zoo answering Nigerians. When I, I don't want, I hate you people with them. I don't want to see you. You're a fool. You're a, you are, you are a creation of Lugard and, and, and um, what's her name? Shaw. What's her name again? Uh, Flora Shaw. You are the creation of your fellow human being. I feel sorry for you people. Animals in the zoo. Zoological Republic, people without shame nor honor. Where is Gowan? I'm heading a prayer group. Abdul Salami Abubakar that looks like a calibus monkey. He's busy telling you I'm a reconciliation of flu. Reconcile what? So Flanagan can take my land? So you can conquer me? Can you do your own Nigeria? That is the only purpose that Nigeria serves. Is to head, you know, it's like, uh, have you seen where those, they call them the shepherd dogs, where they're heading sheep into a pen or into a circle? Go and Google it. I used to watch it on BBC, on Country Life program. They train the dogs to be shepherding the sheep. Only one dog will be heading a whole sheep up, up to up to 50. Until they get them into the pen and they lock it. The more you shout one Nigeria, you're like a sheep. Being headed by a shepherd dog. For them to kill you, you have to be in one Nigeria. For Fulani to take your land, you have to be in one Nigeria. For Fulani to destroy your future and your hope, you have to be. In, you why don't you understand it? It's like putting people into a stadium and then bombing that very place. They say, Oh, come into the stadium, come in, come in, come in. Nigeria is like a stadium of death. They are heading you into one place to destroy you because if there is Biafra, Flanagan cannot come without visa. If there is Ududu, they cannot come. Have you ever wondered? Our mothers are crying in Iguacha, in Eleme. In Eleme, crying. Flanagan are everywhere. And I'm asking you, if you had Biafra, people are crying in Bayasa. Oh, we are, we are dying. Oh, they're killing us. Oh. And this question is simple. If you had a Biafra, can Flanagan be in your forest? I, they can never answer that question because most of them are Nigerians. Foolish by nature. Very foolish. You know, God gave man brain so you can reason and think. That is why a white man can sit down and devise solutions to problems. But a black man will superstitiously be hoping on one native doctor or one miracle from God from somewhere Failing to do that thing that will practicalize, or should I say, trying to practicalize the solution to his problem. Never. Mr. Quote you, John chapter 8, verse 19. Ignorance and superstition. Leah Shuaibu is in captivity. And you have Christian Association of Nigeria doing nothing. Nothing to do nothing. All that concerns is a private jet. <laughs> no wonder the, the Janjaweed are slaughtering us at will. Slaughtering us at will. Very sad indeed. Very, very sad indeed. And as if, you know, sometimes there's some news you come across you think it's a joke. <laughs> Until you pinch yourself and you know you're not dreaming. Let me ask all of you one simple question. You idiotic Nigerians, the most hopeless, useless people on the face of this earth. Who started carrying AK-47 in Nigeria? Who are the people that started carrying AK-47 in Nigeria? They are not the police or the army or navy. Who are they? Answer my question. Who are the people that started carrying AK-47 in broad daylight? If you go to YouTube and Google it, Namdekano at Izu River. How many years ago was that? 
I want to ask all of you now shouting, hey, they, they have militia, they are forming militia. I want to ask you, who were the first people to have a militia in Nigeria? We are they arrested. They said that if you say anybody with AK-47, shoot that person. How many Fulani terrorists have they shot since last week or two weeks ago? I feel and I keep asking uh, people say I shouldn't say it, but I, I have to honestly. In my next life, I cannot be a black man, I cannot come close to Africa. I'm telling you the truth. Your stupidity is second to none. Your stupidity is second to none. God is my second to none. I have never seen a bunch of more idiotic people on this earth. Today they're shouting. Because now that we have what they have, they are angry and they are shouting. And all of you are idiotically doing their line and their narrative. Because you're a Nigerian. And by nature, you are very foolish. Especially those of us from the South. Very, very foolish. I'm telling you. Very more than foolish. You see how the Fulanese are organizing themselves. All their governors. They are in tandem. Everybody knows their job. Their job is to conquer every ethnic nationality. That is their job. And they are singing from the same team sheet. All of them. From Atiku Abubaka to the last person. Claiming he or she is a moderate. They know what they are doing. And all of you, as always, from the South, uh, you're shouting your one night. And I'm thinking, what sort of school did some of you go to? Miet Yala finally accepts that their so called headers are bandits terrorizing Nigeria. Miet Yala. Why did they accept? Because of the consistency you find here on this platform on Radio Biafra. Because of the consistency of the indigenous, no other person, no other group, I'm telling you, and they, they have, of course they know it. Nigeria, that Nigerians, those that we are saved, the few people that we have managed to save so far, across ethnic divide, is because of this platform, Radio Biafra, and what IPOB has been doing. When we are screaming and shouting that they will take you over, this. <laughs> you're dreaming, it cannot happen, when it's the first century, what is happening today? It was because IPOB punctured their plan. That is why they're incensed. That was why they came to kill me. That was why they killed 28 people in my compound. That is the reason why my parents are dead. That is the reason why my relatives, those who suffered the trauma, some of them are still dying till today. I have an announcement to make later on. Because IPOB discovered their plan and destroyed it two years in advance. That's why they're upset. That is why they're angry with us. That is why they prescribe. When they write, they prescribe the IPOB. Even the Yoruba journalist in Lagos writing prescribed. The idiot knows very well. That Miet Yala are the real terrorists in Nigeria. You know, in those days in Abba, when we see uh, as children, we used to observe people were shouting, hey, uh, Tifo, Tifo, Onyoshi. They want to stone or kill that very person. To, you know, they, they want to meet out their kind of a mob justice against this individual. The individual will turn around and starts, I will now join the mob to be shouting, Tifo, catch him, catch him. So you don't know who is the thief anymore. That was the game, the clever game that Fulani Janja would played on all of you. Once you rise up to point them out for who they are, they say, no, no, he's Christopher Fulani, Christopher Fulani, kill him, kill him, kill him. And all of you from the South, <laughs> As idiotic as you always as you always have been, because had Aziki and I want to work out the acts together, this nonsense will be happening. The same idiocy then is now, uh, of course, we've destroyed it. It's no longer happening. Do you understand? Are you now beginning to see why I told you that tonight's program is like no other? You know me, I don't take prisoners, I don't give a damn, I don't, I don't give a toss what you think, what you might gossip about tomorrow. That is your useless business. It's not mine. You know, I don't give a damn. I don't, I don't care. Who are the Bantis terrorizing people? Me yet, yet I've been telling you from the one. Today, they opened their mouth to say, we are the terrorists. And on the same day that Miet Yala is saying we are the terrorists, that same day that the army is saying we are going to the south to bomb everybody, to kill everybody. <laughs> Not to bomb Miet Yala or to arrest them. No, 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 no. I said by their own admission, from their own mouth, 
I'll read it for you. It's, it's news from the zoo. Do you see why we formed ESN? Eastern Security Network. It is because of ESN. That is why you have not been colonized. You can see what they're doing here. Do you know that Yoruba people are refugees in Benin Republic? It seems you people, you, some of you don't even know what is going on. Out of shame, some Yoruba people don't want to carry it. Out of shame. Because if they carry it, they will say that this is a fulfillment of the prophecy carried out by Nam the Khan many years ago. I told them, you will suffer. You will suffer. You will suffer it. The same thing we suffered in Biafra, you will suffer it. Get your acts together. Do you know there are Yoruba people in Benin Republic as refugees in, in the refugee camps? <laughs> and they are busy, they are, they are idiotic editors in Lagos writing prescribed, prescribed. Whereas his, his relatives are in Benin Republic as refugees. Who sent them there as refugees? The same person that, that is telling him, oh, please call IPOB prescribed. The same idiot telling him to and he write it is the same person responsible for sending his family on, 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 on should I say, into a refugee camp in Benin Republic. But the editor of maybe Punch or all these idiotic papers in the West, they went to school, oh. they, they, are, they are intellectuals. You know, the, the, the version of, of intellectualism in Nigeria, I, I, sometimes I wonder, oh, I, I seriously, I am perplexed. You're a journalist and you went to school. And you're an intellectual, yes. Somebody from Abuja, Fulani Janja, would call you and say, uh, I saw your report yesterday. You did not say that Nam the Khan is a fugitive, that IPOB is proscribed. Why? You say, okay, okay, sir, I'll correct, sir, I'll correct. <laughs> Fulani will rule forever, sir. Yeah, no problem. Okay, uh, your money is on the way. Uh, your, you get a lot soon. A lot of 4,600 now. And then you, that same phone you're using to answer a call from a Janjaweed from Abuja, you get a call from your village to tell you that your mother has been killed, your uncle killed, your relatives have now fled to Benin Republic as refugees, and you're an editor in Lagos, punched in the paper, writing prescribed. Whereas you, the, the same people have now proscribed your village. And you are now in Benin Republic. Who is the fool? I feel sorry for these people. 4,600 naira a lot. Oh, God, can't you see? I called them proscribed yesterday. I, I, uh, can't you see? I said that the county is a fugitive. Didn't you see me? <laughs> Fulani is just playing ping pong with her. You people are fools, beyond fools. I'm telling you the truth. People are idiotic. Idiotic beyond idiocy. Useless Nigerians. Animals thinking that, assuming they're human, you people are not human beings. You can't, you can't reason very well. No bunch of human beings can reason the way you do. No, I challenge you, no body on this earth. Embodiment of stupidity. Let me tell you the news in Nigeria. You know, when if you're dreaming and you hear this type of news, you say, ah, yeah, it's a dream. I, I shouldn't be bothered. But it's reality. The fourth largest and most deadly, in fact, now number three in the world, full landing terrorists. They are the people that started bearing AK-47 in open broad daylight with the help of the army and the police. Now, ask yourself this question. A full army pastoralist, as they call themselves, who gave you the gun you're carrying? You know, you know, you know, Nigerians are very foolish. They ask simple questions that they cannot ask. This gun you're carrying, you've been carrying this gun since the year 2013. Who gave it to you? You claim you don't have money. Even if you sell one cattle for 150,000 naira, where did you buy this gun from? That is the simple questions that Nigerians are not able to ask themselves. Now you understand it? Do you see why they want us killed? Do you see why they want me dead? Do you see why they demonized IPOB and Biafrans? This is the truth they don't want you to hear. It's a simple question I'm asking the Chief of Army Staff, Chief of Naval Staff, Chief of Air Force, Chief of Asorok, Chief of, uh, of Gwombe, all these idiots, I'm asking you. Where did an ordinary poverty-stricken Fulani pastoralist 
get AK-47 from? A very uncomfortable question. By the time, even if you begin to ponder this question over and over, by the time you begin to provide answers, it leads back to Fulani government in Asok. Fulani soldiers commanding a 32 battalion artillery. It goes back to Fulani police commissioner. They're all in it together. All in it together, all of them. One accord, they know what they're doing. You see, one intellectual, not calling you talking rubbish. Speaking grammar, they don't understand. <laughs> Whereas well, Fulani is in their forest. I warned my Yoruba brethren stop supporting Fulani. They said, No, you, you're a, a rebel rouser. You are hitting up the polity. You, you are a rebel. You, you are a tree. You, you, the action is treasonous. The grammar, treasonous. But now there are Yoruba people in Benin Republic as refugees. Who gave them this new refugee status? Is it IPOB? Or is it the same people that IPOB has been warning you over the years about? Now who is the fool? Who is the idiot in the house? These are the things that Nigerians don't sit down for one second to ponder. Just think about it for a minute. Who sent Yoruba people to Benin Republic as refugees? Who? Those people are the real terrorists, isn't it? Let me read it for you. The umbrella body of headsmen in Nigeria, the Miyeti Ala, Kotal, Ohore, whatever that means, Ohoro, as you say, says headers are facing so many challenges from hostile host communities, including vigilante groups and other criminal elements who rustle cows in the country. Now listen, the group said some displaced herders in the country who were dispossessed of their cows end up becoming bandits. <laughs> you see how that's going to justify it. You know the way that Britain tried to justify the slaughter of five million Biafrans. The one idiot the other day, is it doing a coup one fool like that? made the same mistake of saying what Britain had in store for us because you killed Sadwana of Sokoto. They said, who killed Sadwana of Sokoto? His name is Chuku Manzob. And where is he from? He's from Panam. In a place you call Delta State. In a place you say it's not South, it's not Hebrew. They are Deltans. Look at how they are playing. <laughs> I told you they are playing ping pong with your brain. Somebody you claim is not Igbo killed Sadan of Sokoto. You said Igbo killed him because of that. Let us kill Igbo people. When I go to Panama and I say, oh, Panama people are my people. You say, no, they're not. They're Delta. Don't, don't come here. They're Niger Delta. Oh. Uh, but the, but the, the person you claim is responsible for the punishment that you're now giving out to all Igbo people, all Biafran people, by extension, He's not an Igbo man, according to you. You said in Zogu is from Delta. He's not, he's the Niger Delta. That's a useless me he is. And now you're killing all, you are killing Igbo people because of a Niger Delta person. Yet they're not supposed to be together. And we accept all the, <laughs> Zoo. Oh, God have mercy. The, I'm just trying to point out how foolish a Nigerian is. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Nigeria is the most idiotic thing on the face of this earth. Somebody's from the, you claim he's Delta, he's a he's a Niger. Don't come here. We are Niger Delta, so don't come here. But you don't know he's saying that Igbos are suffering because they killed Sadwana. And who killed Sadwana? Chukuman Zogo from we are from Niger Delta. And you're telling me that we are okay. I hate no seriously, no just about how are we normal? People that listen this way. Are we okay? He's not an Igbo man. But when he wants to kill Igbo, he becomes an Igbo man. <laughs> he said that uh, the bandits terrorizing you, those that um, took um, Leah Shuaibu, because everybody's now doing everything under Boko Haram, which is, which of course is a lie, it's not Boko Haram. These are Fulani bandits sponsored by Fulani governors and politicians. And when he, when he wants to, he say, look, no, our, our unity is in, is in danger. Go to our unity. You know, when you want to, in, in those days, when, when, when we were very small, 
if you want to, let's say you're there are, because people wonder why we say everybody's our brother and why we have this camaraderie in us. Because as children, you're uh, our parents, so to speak, or guardians will put a sauce in one pot. We eat from one plate, all of us, from one. People think it's a sign of poverty. No, it is bonding beyond bonding. You know, when, when, let's say there are four of you eating this or her soup or bitter leaf or vegetable soup and the meat, you, as, you're, as you're eating, you're, you know, I never knew the fingers can be so sensitive. As you're eating, the middle long finger is checking where there's obstacle. Any obstacle is either fish or meat, you know that for sure. Let's say you check it and it's only two and there are four of you and you want to eat the meat. Everybody who grew up in the village will identify what I'm telling you now. You will tell them, oh, oh, can you see that cockroach on the wall? As they all look towards the wall, you take the meat and put it in your mouth. You reduce the number of the meat or the piece of meat in the, in the pot to one, from two to one. You quickly chew it and you swallow it. The reason why you were able to do that was because you distracted their attention by pointing them to something that caught their interest. And as they looked towards that very place, you now managed to take the meat. And you saw every, every boy in the village acts now. they all over the world. They know what I'm telling you. They know it. Now, let me tell you how it happens. Because I want to tell you how stupid Nigerians are. That's what I'm doing. No, nothing more. Do you know how foolish Nigerians are? <laughs> Fulani brought AK-47 into Nigeria, gave it to the bandits. Here it is, Fulani opened their mouth to say, those who are doing banditry are Fulani cattle rares. Understand this very clearly. Now, in order to stop us from getting together to challenge them, anything you do becomes reasonable felony. That's the trick. It's a, it's a very clever trick. So anything is Nigeria is breaking all our unity, our founding fathers, so our, they keep pointing you to unity of Nigeria and the being the idiot that you are, as you're looking at unity of Nigeria, they are busy in your first kidnapping, raping, pillaging, destroying. It's a very simple, it's a, it's a very simple trick. They occupy you with that thing as uh, as, a, as American ambassador came with her diversity in diversity rubbish. That is threatening diversity. We are telling you that Leah Shuaibu is in captivity. Second child now. We are telling that Fulani is in my forest. They're telling me about uh, unity and diversity. In Anuka Kuka, yeah, 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 in Anuka story. Fulani, they are raping my mothers in LMA. They are killing them. We are an idiot, is he, who claims he's not Hebrew, he's a knighted uh, Eltan. One idiot serving Fulani. Are you listening? Our mothers are being raped. Our land is being destroyed. Invaders, they claim from Futajalo, invaders from Mali are in my village. Raping and killing our women. When I rise up to challenge them, you tell me, remember the unity of Nigeria. One Nigeria, nobody should, you're hitting up the polity. Hey. <laughs> and some of you bought into that nonsense. Because you're foolish. As a Nigerian, you're an idiot. You have no brain. I challenge you to an open debate. Come, I travel all over the world. Come out and debate me. Shoinka never uttered a word against Fulani bandits until their cattle ate his uh, cabbage and carrot. Until they ate his cabbage and carrot in his farm. Now he's already speaking up. Typical black people. That is the way we are. Typical, very typical. But we are changing that mindset and mentality. That is our job. And we're going to, the time now is three minutes past 8 p.m. The land of Biafra. That's how you know we are live. Anywhere you are, if you look at your timepiece right now, it is three minutes past the top of the hour. Imagine if they had succeeded in killing me. Can you imagine that? How will this gospel be preached? That is why I owe my life to Elohim and to gallant men of the volunteer command of IPOB. 
They said, I have to leave because you, this, you have to preach this gospel that the world may hear it. If not by now, I'll be a dead man. And uh, all of you in Nigeria, being as idiotic and useless as you were, by now you would have forgotten. You people is the principal reason why I believe that black people are mentally de defective. We are not sound mentally. You may cry and curse and complain. In the next six months, you come back and tell me, oh, but you are right, oh. Nigeria is the reason why I believe that the black race is cursed. Because the, 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 the bundle of stupidity in the brain of somebody who calls him or herself a Nigerian <laughs> is enough to convince me that uh, <laughs> black people are useless. Children are listening. And I want, uh, parents are going to answer difficult questions tonight after this program. Your children will ask you, but uh, daddy or mommy, what are you doing? What did this little girl do? That, uh, uh, that is being held in captivity now for nearly three years. What's her crime? What will you tell your child? It's the crime of Leah Shwebu. What did she do wrong? What crime did Leah Shwebu commit? Her only crime is to be born a Nigerian. That's her only crime in life. And those responsible for her plight are the ones telling you, don't, don't break Nigeria. Don't, because they know if you break Nigeria, Fulani will have no hold over you. Do you understand? It's a simple trick. Fulani understands Britain that is working for Fulani, they understand. Once Nigeria breaks, a Fulani man cannot come from Timbuktu to Izombe forest. It's not possible. How? These are the things we've been trying to get you to understand for years for very many years, but your idiocy and your natural black stupidity will not allow you to. Some of you will be upset tonight. You know what I mean? Do I, do I give it us? Does it bother me? You can, um, maybe tomorrow you gossip, you gossip, you gossip, or of course one thing. You can never be me. Not now, not even in your next life. Ugo Jr. If you don't know, let me tell you. <laughs> the terrorists, they said it. In the Southeast, uh, we support any policy by the government that seeks to stop the clashes between, because we have said enough is enough. That was why we formed ESN. Enough is enough. We're not going to have it. Now they are saying we will abide by any law. And we are saying it is too late. I don't want to see Fulani moving cattle around, no. They will be chased and they will be destroyed. It's an order. I'm saying it. Copy me and send me to the whole world. I don't care. Anywhere, my order to ESN is this. Anywhere you see Fulani in the open grazing, their cattle will destroy them. One Nigeria, yes. So that is the gift of one Nigeria. The only thing we now gained from one Nigeria is uh, 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 our Yoruba brethren in the Republic as refugees. They are now occupying our forests. Because we, we, what we did by the actions of IPUB, what we did was to get them to act two years before they, they planned to strike. Two years. What they wanted to do is in 2022, they would rise up and destroy everywhere. BBC will not carry it. CNN will not carry it. America will just say, it's about multiculturalism. Yeah, they need to live together. And our land is gone. Our identity is gone. After all, Nigeria is seen as an Islamic state. A whole terrorist coming out to say, we are the bandits. These are the same people that Asa Rock, the so-called presidency of Nigeria said that they are legitimate stakeholders in the governance of Nigeria. Go and Google it. Mieti Yala is a legitimate stakeholder in Nigeria. Go and Google it by Garuba Shehu. I don't know if he's the acting Buhari now. I don't know. All of you are in Nigeria. We Nigerians. This is our, our polity. We Nigerians. We are Nigerians. You believe stupidity on top of stupidity. Terrorists are the ones ruling you. 
that the ones to shout treasonable felony. Now tell me, what is more treasonous than bandits? What is more treasonable than what fool I needed to 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 Lee Shwebe? Please explain to somebody. Please explain to me. What is more treasonable or treasonous? Has the love to treasonous? He's treasonable. Do you know what it is? He's treasonable. Flani. He's treasonable. You idiots. I never went to school. This UG. I feel sorry for you people. Black. Ah, to fear what? People who cannot reason very well. A terrorist, a terrorist group came out in the open. We are the rulers of Nigeria. Terrorist group, terror, terror. <laughs> they travel with them a motorcade. We shall deal with them in the land of the rising sun. We have started, we're not going to stop. We will sacrifice everything sacrificeable. We are about to teach them a new dimension of madness they have never seen before. If they bring this war to us, I told you people many years ago, and I'm repeating tonight, for every one suicide bomber you have in Boko Haram, I'll give you 10 in Biafra land when the time comes. Fulani cannot take our land, not while I'm alive, it cannot happen. God is my witness. Fulani cannot take one inch of Biafra land or send us into exile, it can never happen. Terrorists are in charge of your lives. And, and you're busy speaking grammar. Uh, 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 they treason us because you're on television. Come on, the, 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 uh, the like, uh, uh, a retired prostitute with her finger painted on, on the Arise TV talking rubbish. Treason ever. Is that not true? Upon a command to Jesus. There are idiots everywhere. We will kill all non state actors in the forest, says uh, Chief of Defense Staff, Major General Loki Irabo. He will kill all non state actors. But you have not killed Boko Haram. <laughs> you know, this is, you know, sometimes, <laughs> I don't, is, is it the, is it, the, are you sure it's not the pepper, the amount of pepper we put in soup back home that is making us this foolish? It could be the pepper, oh? because. Other people that don't eat that much pepper, they're, they're, they're not as foolish as this. You know, when we eat with a soup, we'll be sweating and we'll be still be eating it. Maybe that pepper is going to our brain to scatter it. This idiot is Major General Loki Irabo. He's the chief of defense staff. He has not defeated Boko Haram in some in tiny Sambisa forest, though. We will kill all non state actors in the forest. But ordinary Sambisa, you cannot take Sambisa. Say, so if you make this statement, we'll all be shaking. Hey, they're about to come. Oh. <laughs> We're asking them to come. Come now. We are waiting. Come and take our forest. Let's see. For your full animal masters. This idiot is married to a full animal janjaweed. This fool. Lucky Rabo. He's from Niger Delta. Any day they sack him now, they say he's an evil man. <laughs> Oh dear, <laughs> I have seen enough stupidity in Nigerians that I don't think that no wonder the rest of the world is doing very well. <laughs> God packed the whole foolishness in the brains of people that call themselves Nigerians. Wild beasts, animals everywhere. Chief of Defense Staff who will kill all non state actors in the forest. In a country that it claims they're not at war. We had to have the law court. So there is no, <laughs> what it's telling you is that Nigeria has no laws now. Imagine an American general, chief of defense staff in America, coming out and saying, we will kill everybody in the forest in America. <laughs> they will tie the idiot and put him in a mental home and say, you're not well. But this one is the chief of defense staff. Because he was around. Chief of Defense Staff. I will kill everybody. But under the Sambisa, you cannot take Sambisa. Under the Sambisa Forest, you can't take it. Sambisa held by, by a ragtag band of illiterate Islamic terrorists. You want to come and tell, take over. 
Is it that oh, there's one stupid fake video uh, I'm seeing that said they have brought plane? I mean, maybe you can be up now. You drop your bomb and you fly away. Come down on foot. KK you know. Uh, yeah, you people not cry. I'm a stupid sort of idiot. He, he said he's a lucky rebel. The military has completed arrangements to neutralize non-state actors and other agents of violence in the country. Look at this idiot. Some beasts are ordinary, some beasts are forest. You forest, some beasts are forest. You cannot take it. It is the whole of Nigeria you take. <laughs> These people are jerks. So, so when they say it, we'll be afraid. We'll be shaking. Oh, they're, they're coming. Oh, they are coming. They're coming. Come now. Come. They will bury you there. You think that now is like before. You talk all this nonsense and people will be panicking. They have not seen war. We have seen war. You know, Lord, there was war. In my compound, there was war. I have seen it. And when the time comes, I will release a videotape of when they were shooting at me at Obakala Junction, Nigerian Army. Chico Kabe said I will not die, and I didn't. Well, at the right time, I released the video. Who will kill on non-state actors. But Boko Haram is busy sucking your barracks in the north. In the Sharia Janja with north. You cannot stop Boko Haram from sucking your barracks. You have not taken some bills for us. But you are making a bold claim. Who will neutralize, come and neutralize now. As you are leaving the barracks, People are taking it over. Come out now and neutralize. <laughs> Let's see. You people come into our lot looking like a um, minimal blue, like a like a vulture soaked with rainwater. Hiding. You you read some of you read the reports on Sunday. What did they tell you? ESN is active everywhere on the on the ground in our land. Even today. Sahara reporters that loves writing about Southeast, Southeast. Today they said uh, that ESN is also in the South South, you know. We are everywhere. If your village is under siege, we are coming. I assure you, we are coming. And our people are responding very well. America has, they have woken up at last in America. As I told them that they will. I cost them in America for eating too much hamburger and drinking so much soda. And I said, after saying what I said, you people will still fund the defense of our land. And now they are doing it. They will fund it. All of you, you will fund it. We will defend our land. You want me to leave my land to fall to take over? Is that what you seriously, is that what you think? Whilst I'm alive? That's rubbish. No, it can never happen. This general, <laughs> I don't know his name, is a rabble. I want to tell him something. I want people to understand very carefully. That is why I say all the time, when you're coming to listen to us, bring a pen and a paper. What I told the zoo army will happen to them is now happening in Niger. What happened in Niger, I will tell you, is a very simple story. The Niger government, because Nigeria has never won any war on its own before, not even a battle. Nigerian government went to Niger Republic and Chad and Cameroon, begging them to give them soldiers to fight Boko Haram around some piece of forest. Niger Republic stupidly agreed and sent their troops south. As they sent their troops south, bandits of some Fulani went now and they took over their land. <laughs> it's something I see. Our people should not panic. There is a method in our madness. I said we will draw them to the east. This army of the, the few Janjaweed left, they will march to the south. And as they are marching to the south, they will leave a vacuum in the north. The terrorists will take over. And the north will no longer be habitable for the next 92 years. You doubt me? Go to Syria and to Yemen. Go to Somalia. That's what's going to happen. You call them bandits, but we know they're terrorists. So as they move the zoo army into our land, their flank at the back will be open. I don't want to bore you with military terminologies now, this evening. Before they will start saying, when did he go to military school? When did he go to military school? But their army, because they're very foolish, they're fallen, they're ginger with, they're very hopeless. They will come down south. They will come. And when they come, 
they open their back to terrorists from the north. And I have never seen this idiot is talking about bombing every forest, which is impossible militarily. Any army, anywhere, no matter how powerful you are, if you're on a battlefield, you only face one direction. If you're fighting an enemy at the front and another one at the back, you're finished. But he claimed he's a general. He went to general, he went to San Jose, he went to Moms, all these stupid places he claimed. He, they always claimed they went to. This is a general talking like, like a kindergarten fool, like somebody who never actually been to a classroom before. You're a military man. You want to move your army down south. When you have a formidable Boko Haram at your back, you're coming to meet us in the east. You're coming. You will see us. Of course, you will see us. You meet resistance in the west. And you, you are in the middle. Boko Haram is chasing you from the north, from your rear, your rear flank. We are chasing you from the east. Ududu was chasing you from the west. And you claim you're an army that you will survive. And you're a general. Oh dear. Uh, I thought I, I know that Nigerians are stupid, but your generals are even more stupid. You can drop bomb from air, that is true. But I also, as a general, you know you must commit troops on the ground to win any war. You can drop, uh, drop as much bombs as you like from the air. You must come down. You must place boots on the ground. That's what we're waiting for you. And, and you're allowing me. Come, we're waiting. I, I said before that people think I'm just fighting for Biafra, no? The strategy we're deploying is very simple. At the end of the day, there will be no Nigeria. The name Nigeria will be erased from history books. Let their army come. Some idiots who don't understand are thinking, we cannot fight a guerrilla war in the terrain we don't know. This if these fools who are saying we should be offensive all the time now, we should attack them in the north. No, of course not. They will come to our land. We know the terrain. Had, had our eternal leader allowed Timothy Omar to to take the second army of Biafra, the both into the bushes, by now Biafra will be free. To sack a, a government is very easy. You can come and run away from the office. But to win a guerrilla war is almost impossible. Impossible! It's impossible to win. Ask Americans in Vietnam and they will tell you. And as the French diplomat said during the war in 1968, a white man said, I have never seen a more braver army than the army of Biafra. The French deputy ambassador, go and ask, Google it. Before I came here, I was told that Biafrans fight like warriors. But having been to Biafra, I can tell you that warriors fight like their friends. As Nixon said, had you people stayed on for six more months, America would have come in. But everything is for the will of God to prevail in our lives. But our time has come. If we miss this opportunity, as a race, we are finished. Remember when I told you that they will come? None of you believed me. Or most of you did, of course. IPOB, this very wonderful family did. I said they will come. If we do not rise up now to kill Nigeria, Nigeria will kill everybody. That is why I commend what the Duduwa agitators are doing. It's the middle belt. They've been ravaged now. They have been ravaged. I don't know what God wants to do with middle belt. Maybe he wants to destroy them completely. I have no idea. The time is also now for them to rise up and join the moving train. Look at Niger Republic, so don't panic. When they write all this nonsense, we are coming. Could bring this stupid army, bring it down, let us see. Don't you bleed as well? Don't you bleed, I'm asking them. You will die. Niger Republic made the mistake of coming to the lecture region to come and fight alongside Nigerian troops against Boko Haram, which they cannot even defeat. They left their back open and bandits moved in because nature abhors vacuum. That is why every sensible person must invite them to come. Let them come. There will be no more full <laughs> You see the Sultan. It's the same bandits that will kill him. Sultan said, bandits will kill the idiots. They think they are smart. We are live and direct.
The time now is 24 minutes past the top of the hour. Regardless of where you are, we are preaching the gospel of heaven. That the truth may prevail. I asked you a simple question from the beginning. Do you see what is happening to Leah Schwaibu? A Christian virgin girl from the middle belt, taken by terrorists, fallen terrorists, impregnated. Now twice. Let me ask you again. Do you think that you can take a full and a virgin, full and a girl, selling for the moon to your forest in your village, raping her, getting her pregnant, she's given birth? Do you know what happened to your village? <laughs> they will level it. The entire place, they will level it. This is the mistake the likes of Obasanjo have been making for years. All these idiots shouting one Nigeria either in PDP or APC, all these idiots, all these Iran boys, glorified Iran boys, shouting one Nigeria. You don't know how foolish you are. You have no idea. I remember when I told World War Congress that Fulani are coming, they said I was a madman. I said they are coming. They said, oh, he's a madman. He doesn't know. What... He's trying to cause war. He did not see the war. He was a child during the war. He did not go to war. Has the war not come to you now? Has it not come to you now? Who is the fool? But of course they are not anymore because World War Congress is doing very well to support the efforts we are making on the ground. We are friends all over the world, everywhere. You heard about evangelism in Apoibo. Evangelism, glory be to God in heaven. Everywhere the message, the gospel, we are preaching it. Either on radio or on the streets. Those that uh, received it gave their life to Christ. And they're with God now for judgment. I raised the dragon flag. People don't know the meaning of it. You don't, some of you don't understand the meaning of the dragon flag. You don't have no idea. From the day we raised the dragon flag, from that day we stopped writing to UN about what they're doing to us in the zoo. Because the world, the world doesn't give a damn about you. They have bought over, almost every diplomat in Nigeria has been bought over by the zoo. All corrupt, all of them. US ambassador has been bought over. You can you can all bought over all of them. All corrupt human beings. Very corrupt to the core. We write letter. Bring my evidence, you bring my evidence. Bring my evidence, we bring. Bring more, we bring. Okay, I want to see live interview. We show them. Bring more evidence. Bring the girl, we bring the, we brought the girls to them. That the army raped nothing till today, nothing. Which means, if you don't know what to do, please stop coming to us. And now we know what to do. We have come to die for what we believe in. Are you prepared to die for Nigeria? Then come down to where we are. Catch the walk down around, stupid idiots. You think now it's 1967? <laughs> you must be dreaming. They send their fake news. The uh, army killed 16, uh, uh, 16 IPOPs, Eastern Security Network cooperatives in Abia. A lie. So if you write it now, so you'll be panicking. Oh, they're killing us. So let us stop. Oh. Let me tell you one thing about us you don't understand. The more you kill us, the angrier we become. You see, that is one thing that these idiots don't understand. Let me tell the full and one thing they don't know because they are foolish. They're not sensible. Leave all these things that Britain is doing. If uh, the only reason why it appears as if the full and the weed are doing very well is because of the foolishness of people from the south. Very foolish sort of people. That's all. If not, Fulani can. Let me say something you don't know. I want to let Fulani understand something this evening. You see your hand. Take your right index finger. Look for any part of your body. Use your finger to be rubbing at that same spot all the time. Keep rubbing it every blessed day. Keep rubbing that. Keep disturbing that very place. After a while, that place will become harder than the surrounding skin. Is in nature. I repeat, use your right index finger, not your thumb, index finger, the second one following it. Be rubbing it on a, any part of your skin you like. Every day, keep rubbing that same spot. Keep rubbing it. Keep rubbing it. After a while, your skin will rebel and say enough is enough it will develop hardness. It becomes very tough. That is why even when you're putting on a shoe, maybe a new shoe, and that shoe keeps rubbing at a particular place on your foot, after a while, that place will grow tough skin to meet the challenge that the shoe is bringing to it. That's how life is.
So all these years you were killing us at Tumpo. At uh, everywhere we go to, you shoot us, we die at Haba National High School. Oh, you thought that that would make us become cowards and we'll run back. Ah, no, 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 you're mistaken. It's human nature. We rise up and we fight back. And we are coming with a force you don't even understand. And I'm saying it on live broadcast to the whole world. By the time we are finished with you, your children will also die. You don't know the amount of hatred you have built up. People, people think we're just doing IP again out of normal, that we are normal. No, we are not. Not anymore. The, the level of anger inside us, you cannot fathom. You don't even begin to understand it. You have no idea. The more our people die, the angrier we become. The reason why we surrendered after the war, or should I say, uh, Obasanjo came and said he took surrender was this. Let me tell you one thing you don't know, or people don't know about the Biafran war. The reason why we gave up was because we felt that God had abandoned us. Because some of you, are, of course, most of you are very young. You don't know, there's a song called Nkosi Wam. It was played after the war. I, don't, I, can't, find it, I, I can't find it anymore. It says in Kosin Wam, Obogeniki Inebe, Akwarele. Because our people sat down and felt that God had abandoned us, that God cannot be in heaven and such a thing is happening on this very earth. That was what we gave up during the war. But God knew what he was doing. Then we were not ready. Mentally and spiritually. I didn't say physically. I said mentally and spiritually. But now we are. And that is why Biafra will come. All these lies. If they like, let them publish tomorrow that they killed oh, 40,000 uh, ESN operatives. Babash. Instead, they're the ones who are dying and they'll continue to die. Dara. And as I said, I'm warning them now. You see all those your children schooling abroad <laughs> in some in the UK, some in the US. We have people that will go to prison in the US waiting for them. When I give the order, you will hear what will happen. When I give the order, you will hear, you will hear what will happen. Let us set example with a few of them back home first before we look for your kids abroad. That trouble, oh my, you know, I like the scriptures. I want to quote the Bible for them so they understand it. <laughs> All this janja weed, claiming that they are a commissioner of police. Oh, we are going to do something. We are going to kill them. We will flush them out. We will neutralize them. Oh, you go. Uh, grandma. Grandma. You are speaking too much grammar. We have reconnected on, on our app. is um, is wobbling because they are panicking. <laughs> they are panicking, this broadcast. They are shaking. We are exposing them. I want to quote the Bible for the zoo. So as I'm quoting it, I want people to please note this down, please. And, write it, and, and I'm Googling it as I'm talking. You know, I can multitask. As you have made women childless. <laughs> oh dear so shall you be childless amongst women so shall your mother so shall your mother be childless amongst women it's in the scriptures because we are children of light anything we are doing Elohim is that is the book of Samuel for Samuel chapter 15 verse 33 that is this you know every day we give them the scriptures that is the scriptures I want this lucky Irabo, every so called one idiot that was at the division in Ugu. A failure at a hero. A complete failure at the division in Ugu. He's not the one talking, you're talking rubbish. As if we don't know him. A complete failure. He went to fight Boko Haram and came back in disgrace. Is the way they made him chief of army staff and he's talking nonsense. I want to read a verse in the Bible, something that in the Torah the original Bible, something that Samuel said. Not this one, the Europeans added their own to it. The original word of God, the Torah. And Samuel said, as your sword has made women childless, so will your mother be childless among women. And Samuel put Agag to death before the Lord at Gilgal. I want Fulani Janjawi to understand as you have made many mothers childless and turned women to widows, so shall 
you also be childless. Your children will bear you. As I said, you see, you know, by the time we are done with what we are doing, the world will record IPOB and Nam the Kano as mad people. That's what I want. You people are about to see madness, the type you've seen before. All that money you're saving, you're accumulating and stealing and depositing in Dubai. UAE government will eat it. All the money you have stolen and put in England, the Bank of England will take it. Your children cannot eat it. Oh, oh you think you can kill other people's children and you're only walking about very free. <laughs> you people are jokers, honestly. You people are, you are mad. You are insane. We don't forgive. We are not going to forget. You see, everybody you killed at war, oh, National High School, at my house, Isiyama Faruku, everybody you killed, we are going to avenge all of them. We are going to avenge all of them. That you may see madness. And then after that, let your children come and enjoy now. Let's see. You think you're smart. You can kill other people's children and your own will be enjoying going to Cambridge and on stolen wealth. <laughs> you must be dreaming. Let me tell you what Samuel said. Shmuel, of course, the correct pronunciation. As your sword has killed the sons of many mothers. Um, I think the new living position is better. And I want this quotation everywhere tonight, all over the world. The first book of Samuel, chapter 15, verse 33. Use the new living translation. This is for Fulani generals and police commissioners in our land. As your AK-47 has killed the sons of many mothers, now your own mother will be childless. Ponder over it. Very, very important. As they are doing all this, they are nonsense. They're saying the North cannot be threatened. These are the people threatening us. You know, that is one thing. I, I, I Sometimes I, I wonder the type of journalism you have in Nigeria. The people threatening us, they're in our forest, killing us, and now turning around and saying you cannot threaten us. <laughs> hey, Zoo, they're called the Northern Elders Forum. It's from their news today. The North can't be threatened into submitting to separatist agenda. That foolishness of IPOB, every, everybody is now foolish. That thing we saw many years ago, um, and they killed us for it. They campaigned against us for it. Now everybody has seen it. Isn't God wonderful? Do you see why I said that IPOB, they are the only chosen people. I'm being honest. They are the only people. Who, what we saw many years ago, some of you are saying it just last night. The Northern Elders Forum has said no amount of political maneuver by secessionists in parts of the country will threaten the North's political fortune. Ahead of the 2023 elections, which means they are telling you that we hold the key to Nigeria. That's what they're telling you. People who are in our forest raping and killing our people, they are telling us that we are the ones threatening them. <laughs> and newspapers will carry this junk. No, his name is Dr. Hakim Baba Ahmed. And my name is Mazen Namdekano. We are not relatives. I don't know who this man is. By blood, by genetic disposition, by religion, by culture, by social inclination, I don't know who they are or where they came from. Just that Britain decided that uh, uh, we say a bunch of monkeys in Africa, let's put them together as one country. That's what happened. He, he described the wave of irredentism, not the wave of Fulani banditry, no. They would see, uh, they, they think they're clever. And some of you make Fulani feel that they're very clever, they're, they're very foolish. Fulani, you people are the ones threatening us. You are the ones in our forest. Fulani, you are the ones that sent Yoruba people on exile as refugees into the Republic. Fulani, it is you. Yoruba young people are rising up. You are now claiming we are separatists, irredentists, or whatever garbage you call it. Because you think we are fools. Because you will use daily thrust, you use all these stupid Nigerian media houses to drown everybody out. No, but not us. I will come on air to preach. And millions all over the world will listen. Because what we are preaching is the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Fulani, you are the problem. 
but you are the ones complaining because you think we are all foolish. Of course, most of us are in the southern part of the zoo. That is why we must continue to tell the Fulani Janjaweed that they cannot succeed. Nigeria must fall. The zoo must fall. There is no other alternative. You must go back to where you come from. Even the Hausa will reclaim Gobe, which is so good. Mark my words somewhere. Hausa peasants will rise up against Fulani Janjaweedism. They think they're smart, but no, they are not. They have come to the end of the road. They have come into the land of the rising sun, the land of the ancients, where God in his infinite wisdom saw it fit to plant the first human being on this very earth. That is your end. If you don't know, let me tell you now. Let me tell you one thing you don't understand. Ujuku is our Moses. All God did between 67 and 70 is to show us that there is a land he prepared for us called Biafra. That's all he did. And now this generation is here to get it. And the walls of that Jericho must fall. The zoo must fall. I have a very, very critical and sobering announcement to make this evening. I regret to announce that I lost my mother-in-law, Mrs. Anyang, I lost her. She was ill for some time. And it is not unconnected to the fact of the invasion that happened in my house and the fact that um, the zoo has made life for me and my family very difficult. Of course, her very beautiful daughter, my beloved wife that I'm married to. I announced this evening with very heavy heart and deep sorrow and sadness, the passing of my mother-in-law. Very, very sad indeed. Another prize I have to pay. And I'm begging to go to Kabiyama to please stop. I have, I have paid so much prize, so, so much, so much, so much. I have committed so much. I have sacrificed everything, sacrificeable. And today I announced that my mother-in-law is no more. Very sad indeed. But you see, in everything, as David reminds us in the Holy Book, we give thanks to the Almighty in heaven. They are attacking our system as I make this announcement. In all, we give glory to Elohim because he brings and he takes. Who are we to challenge him? You know, sometimes as Job went through, sometimes I feel like I'm Job, you know, so that I can speak against the Holy Spirit, but I can't. Because as David said, you are God, you bring and you take. Anything you say must come to pass. And upon that, we anchor our faith and our belief that everything that happens does so to give glory and honor to your holy name. My mother-in-law served you in truth and in every honesty. And today she's no more, but we shall mourn her deeply. And as she advised me that this match must continue until Biafra is restored. And on that note, we have come to the end. Of course, as time goes, and I will, of course, um, brief you as to the burial arrangements. I thank you all for listening. From me, from here, good evening.